Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's July 6, 2016. So we're halfway through what was supposed to be a rather quiet holiday week. Of course, uh, Monday marked the close for the 4th of July. We're seeing anything but a quiet week over here. In terms of ranges in the S&P 500, again, today, you have to almost step back in a little bit of awe and recognize you're still seeing almost a 30-point range from low to high in the S&Ps. Again, yesterday, an almost identical move inside of the S&Ps. And why is this surprising? It's surprising to me uh, simply in respect to what the markets were actually pricing in as risk. For example, I come into the SPX and you look at the two-day options. Now, not everybody listening to this is necessarily index-centric. I know a lot of people that tune in from time to time here to Theo Trade. you're like, well, what did Tesla do? Absolutely nothing. What's important in the midst of volatility is the indices because the indices are going to drive almost everything that goes on on your screen. So back to the SPX here. With two days remaining to the Friday expiration of these options, you're actually looking at about an $18 expected move. So what the option markets are ultimately kind of dictating here, and again, there's billions of dollars being traded on either side of these options, dictating about an $18 expectation. Now, it doesn't say that we're only going to move 18 bucks. Okay, Quite the contrary. It says... We have a high degree of likelihood of only going up 18 or about down 18 and staying within that range, of course, by this Friday. And what degree you know, or what probability is associated with that? It's about a 68% chance of staying inside of that $18 range. Now, again, what's kind of surprising on that front, you go over to a chart, okay, and apparently the market doesn't necessarily agree with that because the ranges have been phenomenal and large. So all the signs of volatility are there. I mean, again, you know, last week we talked about the hallmarks of volatility. One of those was seeing, you know, wild sell-offs followed by three, you know, four massive up days and really recovering everything that we recovered from, uh, of course, the losses of the British exit. However, here we sit once again approaching 2100. In fact, there's a minute left to play in the period over here and the S&P is literally going to close on 2100. So what you have to kind of stand back and think to yourself right now is number one, okay, the number one thing I'm, I'm actually looking at is I don't like the way that volatility is pricing risk in right now. And to be very clear about that, it means I think the volatility is way low inside of the S&P, and it's also low inside of many of the stocks, the movement that's going on, and this is actual stock price movement. So there's a couple things going on over here, and the actual stock price movement, I think the, the most effective way to denote this to you is to look under volatility. So we can go over here to studies, we can cruise down to add study, all right, and there's different volatility studies, and one way to, again, denote this to you is to look at historical volatility. That's the annualized standard deviation of the past stock price movement. And I'll kind of zoom out and give you a broader look. It's really extreme right now. Okay. Granted, back here, you know, January, February, we were rocking. S&Ps were down at 1800. But, you know, if you haven't ever looked at this before, I think you should look at it and consider like, oh, what is he saying? I'm saying there's a huge amount of movement right now in the S&Ps. Okay. However, if you look over like implied volatility, what's it saying? It's shrugging its shoulders in. Eh, I'll get up when I'm ready to get up. The volatility isn't, okay, rising like I would expect with this kind of volatility being thrown off inside of the S&P. So what that amounts to is I'm not going out there and rushing to sell iron condors. I'm not going to be out there selling Okay, vertical spreads that are out of the money, even though that's my game, all right? I sell options. I've grown up as an option premium seller, but I'm telling you right now, I don't like it, okay? Market's actual price movement is fairly phenomenal 
in comparison to what implied volatility is paying me. And some people compare like implied volatility directly, historical volatility. It's neither here nor there. Implied volatility is forward looking. Historical volatility, it's yesterday's news. But yesterday's news right now, well, we're moving and we're moving in very large ranges. And I don't feel that selling options right now, okay, is paying me enough to take that kind of risk. So I don't get like that warm, fuzzy feeling. And it's important because that resonates through the entire marketplace. Now, you're not going to see me talk a tremendous amount about the Apples and the Googles and the Amazons and the Netflix okay, and the Teslas the next few weeks. Why? Because they're all approaching their earnings cycle. Okay, And when you're approaching earnings, what are you going to do? Well, we could get into a trade on Google. Yeah, and the earnings could come out and could just rip your head right off. Right? You could be higher. You could be lower by 50, 100 points over there. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, the markets, they're difficult enough. Control what you can control. And that's, you know, mitigate and control your risk. When you get unknowns like earnings thrown in there, why bother at this point, right? Here's something we can control. When you look at like the SPX or you look at another ETF and you realize, I'll go over here to the XLF. It's a prime example. Again, the XLF, what is it? Well, okay, the XLF. Whether you know it or not, it's the financials. What is it? It's moving. Okay. XLF is rocking right now. And I don't think anybody's giving the market respect for that. In fact, you can even go into the XLE, which is energy. Energy has been relatively dull lately, but it's still, okay, on an upward swing over here in terms of movement. And I can go from sector to sector to sector over here. So you can see all these sectors, ETFs, the historical volatility is relatively speaking high. Again, the real standout, of course, being the XLF, that the volatility right now, the actual price movement is as high as it was back when the, uh, the market wasn't looking so special in January and February. Again, this may not give you a particularly fantastic outlook for the S&Ps. What I am telling you is, again, use in-out spreads. In-out spreads are to mitigate your volatility risk, but they take nice directional risk. Okay, and what those in-out spreads are, I'll give you a, just a brief example, and we'll do it over here in the SPX. Go out, for example, like 28 days, buy one strike in the money, sell one strike out of the money. Again, there's an entire class we put together on those in-out spreads, and that's going to be an effective means to kind of mitigate some of your volatility risk out there. And I'm just pulling up, you know, a variety of, uh, of different trades over there. Apparently I cannot have more than four legs. Okay. I only have two legs, but, um, in these types of spreads, again, be very aware, again, be very, very aware of what ultimately your risks happen to be. And again, what these in out spreads will do, here's a $10 wide spread for about four bucks. You're like, well, I don't know if I love that one. Yeah, but recognize this spread is already $5 in the money, and you can buy it for 4 bucks. okay? That's how you control things like volatility risk, control time risk, everything in these in-out spreads. Uh, and again, selling premium, not right now. I'm going to hold off until either volatility explodes or until the actual movement in the S&Ps start to die down. Until then, we'll be using a lot of these in-out spreads. Now, another area that's of, uh, I would say, big-time concern in the S&Ps, and if you're not looking at this, you need to. So you, you pull up like a three-year chart in here, and the only reason I'm pulling up a three-year chart, recognize we closed today right at 2100. All-time high, 2134. Well, you don't think that's in the back of every trader's mind? We know it's there. We know we could just have one nice up day and we could be there. I mean, today, a whole lot of nothing goes on. The S&Ps float a little bit higher. Janet Yellen's minutes come out. Yeah, FOMC minutes came out today. It was the most boring minutes that I think anybody's ever seen. Nobody traded it. And it was like this big anticipation of absolutely nothing. Nevertheless, it's got to be in your mind right now of how close we are to the all-time high in the S&Ps over here. And just to put it in perspective, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away. We are 1% away from the uh, all-time high in the S&Ps. Markets love milestones. And every time we come into this 2100 area, you better be thinking it in the back of your mind over there. Again, as well on, on a broader scale, look how high the actual price movement is inside of the S&Ps over here. It looks like it's about to come off a little bit, but uh, don't be fooled. S&Ps 
are capable right now of exploding. We are still, okay, in a rather volatile situation inside of the broader markets. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theotrade. My name is Don Kaufman. Back on, uh, of course, tomorrow.